Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Rakesh Godwani. I am so thankful and grateful that all of you are here. We started doing deep dive long lectures called Get Set Grow, and then we took Get Set Grow into two flavors. One is our online lectures, like what we are doing today. They are long form discourses, discussions on deep theories on topics connected to communication. And then we started doing on ground activities, which are physical activities. We started our first one uh, earlier this month and the second one is about to be planned very soon. And we have received fabulous response. So keep it coming. There is a WhatsApp group with enthusiasts like you. Uh, the whole idea of Get Set Grow is to create a community of communication enthusiasts all around the world. Our intention is to learn together, engage, talk about communication, help each other learn this infinite topic and a very scientific topic. A lot of it is changing with time because everything around us is changing so much. So the beauty of the subject is that no two people speak the same way. No two listeners understand the same way. So that's why it's an infinite topic. And I thoroughly enjoying researching, writing and teaching this subject. That's what we do for a living. Our programs are for working professionals, entrepreneurs, managers from around the world. And uh, today is our fifth session. And uh, today I'm going to go deeper into a very delicious topic called storytelling. And before I go into storytelling, I must tell you, Storytelling is also a little dangerous topic because many of you may have heard this dialogue from a client or a manager or somebody that, hey, story must know, come to the point. So many of us who are working professionals and uh, are working in companies and are working with people, we hesitate to bring stories. And uh, the first few minutes I want to talk about the hesitation demystify why we hear this concept ki story must you know. whereas the science and the reality is that stories are the most important and the gentlest form of communication and we should use them more and maybe the other person is trying to tell us ki are come to the point early so if we can find a story that can connect with the point early maybe we'll have a better communication so we'll blend all of these topics one by one and we'll have a good time together. It's a lovely day, uh, rainy. It's been raining cats and dogs for the last few days. But today, it's slightly benign right now, but it may get worse as we go forward. And this is the time that I must tell you that when you are uh, walking in the streets of Bangalore, uh, there are these small, small shops and chai places which have started to serve delicious hot pakoras nothing better to spend a lovely afternoon with chai and pakoras and people you enjoy with so please do that and uh, i want to talk about during this uh, environment how does a story come about why does it impact so much everybody says it's important but none of us use it in day-to-day -day communication practices in fact my biggest problem is i've done programs for managers where we talked about stories and then we took them to their day-to-day -day work and they never even touched the story. And that's a big problem that you spend so much time learning. Why don't you use it? And the common answer I get is, Rakesh, we are worried that if we tell a story and it doesn't go well, we'll get this feedback story much so long. And many of their bosses have said them very openly, come to the point, don't tell me story, Ramayana Mahabharat much so long. Very commonly heard. Now, this is where I take that question first. That why is it that people are saying story much so long? And the answer is that maybe our stories are too long, too boring, too disconnected with the topic. The person is waiting to listen to a particular area of work and your story doesn't seem to connect. So they become impatient, their emotions go all over the place and they give a quick feedback, a story much so long. That doesn't mean storytelling doesn't work. I think you did not apply the concepts of storytelling to your presentation properly. So in today's topic, I'm going to connect the two. I think first we'll talk about why stories are so powerful. Human behavior connects with stories more. That's a given. 
we have to just find the right recipe the right steps the right ingredients and then use it in the right way and our storytelling journey begins so i'm going to start my conversation with you with this slide give me a second i'll pull that slide it is right in front of me it'll take a few seconds for it to come to you uh, might take 10 seconds because of the drag and it should come to your screen right now there it comes Let me read it out for you. The story has a title called Ubuntu. Very nice story. The motivation behind the name given to Ubuntu operating system and computers. An anthropologist proposed one game to the African tribal children. He placed a basket of sweets and candies near a tree, and made them stand hundred meters away, and announced that whoever reaches first would get all the sweets in the basket. Then he said, "Ready, steady, go." Do you know what these small children did? They all held each other's hands and ran towards the tree together, divided the sweets among them, and ate the sweets and enjoyed it. When the anthropologist asked them, "Why did you do so?" they said, "Ubuntu," which meant, "How can one be happy when all the others are sad?" Ubuntu in their language means, "I am because we are." a message for all generations let all of us carry this attitude within us and spread happiness wherever we go let's have a ubuntu life i am because we are such a lovely beautiful story now this is where i'll pause and i encourage you all to chat with me and i'll take your comments so all of you who are listening to me tell me when i was reading this story ubuntu just one word answers what came in your mind just feel free chat with me let's see what you got i'll help you what went into your mind what flashes of images came to you did you see something and if you can describe that in one or two words that will be great uh, some of you probably may have seen the anthropologist the anthropologist may be wearing a certain kind of clothes chances are you may have visualized the anthropologist in a particular setup maybe a white beard maybe some white shirt or brown pant maybe a gender a man some of us would envision a woman so these are the uh, images that come to your mind the moment i was reading the story the moment i would say african village a certain image would come maybe children of a specific color because we do connect uh these things as we go along and then we would have in envisioned sweets some of us would have in image uh, imagined candies and you know strange wrappers some of us would have envisioned orange color or maybe a milk chocolate maybe a caramel candy because our mind connects with that i never said it's a orange candy but your mind would probably pick up that orange because that's something you connect with shravasti says that i saw the group of children running and laughing together holding hands that's what image that comes to our mind uh, ayushman also says children running towards the sea a uh, tree and uh, some uh, vinay says visualized happy pay faces of those children so maybe a smile your mind is not working and this is the most important point of storytelling that i'd like to talk about and i'll show it in a slide because sometimes we should really focus on what happens when we connect stories there is a concept in communication called resonance and framing very deep concept doesn't matter don't get too worried about jargon but i'd like you to think of the speaker and the receiver as a scientific concept imagine there is a telecom system and the telecom tower is radiating signals at a particular frequency and if your cell phone is not tuned to that particular frequency it will not understand i think that's what is important in communication that when we are speaking there is a people full of rooms their mind is operating in a certain frequency our words may not connect with them and that is called resonance that the resonating frequency that i am speaking and you are listening there is a mismatch and that's where stories come in that stories build that bridge of frequency match between people the moment i say candies 
it's a universal word at least those of us who understand let's say english may understand cantonese every language has their universal words happiness is a universal word sadness could be a universal word and that's why stories connect with everyone in the room so the power of stories is not because they uh, help us understand but they begin the connection between the speaker and the listener and to me that is the biggest problem of communication that all of us prepare a lot but we don't realize that uh, the person listening to us may not understand so you have to connect their mind and your words and that concept is called resonance and stories build resonance they create a frame of common reference many of you because you were listening to me the power of visualization comes and the moment your brain starts to visualize i've got your resonance i've got your frequency you are now listening to me you are now attentive and i slowly warm up your mind to open more and more and keep putting more and more information which is the whole process of communication so remember message number 1 stories help in creating the connections uh i'll just sorry about that i have a bad cough so i'm going to mute myself when i cough a little bit so that i don't create noise for you so when i was speaking these stories your mind was resonating when your mind is resonating with me you're listening when you're listening you are absorbing when you're absorbing my message will become more powerful so stories are very gentle way of opening up the minds of audiences now here comes the next question how do we make a story i mean we get it that stories are important all of you can google uh, there are some famous theories one of the most famous theories called the try you theory it says that the brain has three parts stories go inside and attack the most primitive system because of emotions and because stories have a lot of sensory emotional words like candies happiness running together holding hands a dream sitting down together these words create a little bit of emotional which goes to our basic brain the next brain and the most powerful brain which is this neurofrontal cortex and problem is that many of us uh, prepare presentations that go here the neurofrontal cortex we don't prepare uh, words which go to our basic emotions and emotions are the most ignored form of communication so stories basically do nothing but bring emotions out and the moment you get emotions imagine the mind of your audience is the emotions kind of warm it up moisten it the brain is working and your communication can have much better much better access to your audience so remember this simple thing any story will create emotions now the problem is if the emotion ends up in irritation and frustration the story was a bad idea so we will talk about how to bring a right story let's first understand how do we create a story and there are four simple elements which i'll talk about and the four simple elements of making a story is this that's all there is first of all let's say you are making a presentation and you have to tell your boss that there is something wrong with the customer uh, product that you have sold them so if you start your presentation with a simple sentence that has four elements the place the time the protagonist and some details you're done the story has begun so here is a simple sentence the sentence is day before yesterday at the customer site in kurmangla 11 o'clock in the morning mr ramesh was very angry because the attendance system that we had sold to him stopped working and because of this attendance system stopped working they were not able to measure the attendance of their workers because of that their payments per day were not made on time there was error everybody was unhappy and they called me and gave me a bad ear for so we have to fix this problem now that's such a simple way to explain the problem that the moment i say day before yesterday factory core mangla 11 o'clock your mind will create some image you might see ramesh you may have some ramesh in your life you may think of this person in a mustache or a shirt striped shirt some kind of a form will come and you'll understand the problem better some attendance system 
uh, you will envision his team members acting funny. They're upset. And now the problem becomes easy. So imagine presentation one where the manager is saying that there is attendance problem. The database is not working. We need to fix this. And presentation number two, where you tell a story which has Ramesh and 11 o'clock and Bangalore and Kormangla and upset and angry, chances are that this story number two will be a lot more resonant to the listener. So if you add these four things, place, time, protagonist and details, you're done. Now, this is where I request you that be a little careful. Place is a word, Kormangla, it could be Bombay, it could be some street, Mahatma Gandhi Road, time. Time is very important because if you say seven in the evening, people vision a dark or a late evening and the lights will be switched off. But if you say seven in the morning or 11 in the morning, there is an element of brightness in the story. So these are very powerful techniques to resonate the minds of the audience. Protagonist, if you can explain Ramesh in a sentence or two, Ramesh is a 60 year old veteran of the company and very very good man but gets very rude when something goes wrong so now there is some element of description and details some details to explain the situation maybe the place the setting some details about the problem some details about how it impacted the people anything you can do to just make sure the visual is better and the message is better if you go overboard on details that's where you get a feedback is story much so long. come to the point I think many of us go wrong in the details. Many of us start to give a history. Many of us start to say things which are unnecessary for the topic. And that's why you get a feedback story once more. So if you keep it short, crisp and simple, I think your story has begun. Now, I'm not saying that this story is the only way to do it. I'm just saying that a story has four elements. And if you sprinkle these four elements in your day-to-day -day life, you're done. You can even do a very simple exercise with your next meeting and presentation. Let's say you have a meeting and presentation and your boss says, any updates from you? <coughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot to unmute. Your boss says, any updates from you? All you have to do is sprinkle these four things. And you can say that uh, today morning at 10 o'clock, I met my team. We discussed this important problem of attendance system. I think we found a fix and Ramesh, uh, today he was very happy that he got this fix. This is the way to bring a story. So the place, time, little bit of details can be done. And you'll start to see that the other person is enjoying it. Their minds are resonating with you. So very simple things. And this is how a story does. Now, let's take the next step that we have understood that stories are important. We get it. Thank you very much. We understand that. There are four elements to make a story. How do we now make a story and, and uh, prepare it in a presentation? And that's where a lot of work has to happen. Your brain should have stories like databases. Imagine your brain like a big well. Now the well should have some story. Otherwise, how will you prepare for this presentation? And that's where, my dear friends, I must give you a little bit of dangerous information. If you are not a very curious person, if you're not a very creative person, if you don't read, if you don't travel, if you're a person who's only focused on their work, it will be very hard for you to bring stories. Storytellers, and let's go to history now. Who was a storyteller? Let's go to some few thousands of years ago. I think the simplest definition of a storyteller was a person who came from somewhere outside the world. And when that someone else came from outside to your world, you would want to know what kind of world does he come from. So he would tell stories about that world. That's a storyteller. So travelers brought stories. Second, people who read books, they brought stories. Then people who were very creative in their imagination, they created stories and they started dramas. And that's where the world started to enjoy. That's where Shakespeare came. And today you see all kinds of storytellers so I think remember that storytelling is a very creative art. Your brain needs to be very creative. And for that brain to be very creative, it also should be very curious because when you observe people, when you read, when you absorb, your brains are able to create those imaginary words. I mean, imagine J.K. Rowling 
और जे आर आर टॉल और नाउ दिस न्यू गेम ऑफ थ्रोन्स का ग्रैंड फादर हैज बिन लॉन्च द हाउस ऑफ ड्रैगन हाउ डू दे क्रिएट दीज वर्ल्ड दंसर इज मैसिव क्रिएटिविटी एंड क्यूरियोसिटी दे हैव रेड अदर बुक्स विच आर very magical books and they connected to folklore and they connected to different things they're exposed to that kind of stuff and they bring these stories inside now our job as professionals is to be curious and creative and i'm not saying that we look at house of dragons and uh, lord of the rings and harry potter let's be curious about other companies let's study what's going on in the sectors around us let's look at the reports and the movies that are built around our work and if that becomes a fodder that's good enough so if you look at steve jobs speech when i'm using that as a case study i mentioned it before that he's an extraordinary gentleman uh, may his soul rest in peace uh, we can't really take his example and always learn but his speech the three stories i'm taking that as an example uh if you notice that he took a story from his childhood connected it to a message then he took a story from some work of his connected to a message and then he did something else and connected to a message so now let's understand that stories can come from personal experiences stories can come from your books and knowledge that you have stories can come from your creativity you can actually create something on the whim if you want now hopefully that's a different discussion but let's look at stories that you connect collect from your experiences and reading i think steve jobs took all the three stories from these two elements so please read books please be a little bit more aware of the world around you travel a lot and those of you who are very young i think you can observe others and take their stories and bring it into your system so now one last slide and then we will prepare a framework of storytelling and that's when we will get going so here are the simple framework for storytelling this is the final slide that i'll share with you and then i'm done so go clockwise the first is you need to have an objective so let's say my objective is i work in a company i have a boss i have to update my presentation on my work so my objective is to tell them that there was a problem and we have solved it. so maybe that's my objective setting in the setting i'm going to bring in those four elements the place the time the protagonist and details maybe i'll talk about my team how we are collaborating maybe i'll talk about that aha moment where one of my colleagues found the fix for it and that setting in which that fix happened the lab in which we are working anything that can create a setting the third is a challenge that i must tell my listeners that a story is very exciting when there is a challenge in the story otherwise what's the fun of a story so make sure that you take your audience to a challenge in the story that we were working together we worked for about 24 hours and it did not work that's a challenge then the audience will be like okay what did you do next and that's come that then comes the fourth element which is the resolution that one of us found that if you do like this like that the problem is solved so that's the resolution and then you end the story which is point number 5 and connect it to the object so a simple way of connecting these things are let's say my objective is i want to tell my boss that the problem is solved setting is an environment in the lab where we are collaborating and working very hard on this a challenge is one particular area where we are not able to crack it a resolution is that aha moment where we found the solution and it's working and then you end it with a simple sentence and the objective comes out or you can say the objective so typically a a good benchmark is setting should be about 20% of your story a uh, challenge and resolution should be a good uh, 50% of the story and the remaining 30% is the end and the objective now this is a guideline i mean you can change it many of my students and good storytellers they don't even sometimes have a an ending and sometimes they skip the objective and the audience gets the objective these are all your decisions your uh, judgments uh, but make sure the setting challenge and resolution these three are 70% of your story and let's say your story is 2 minutes so 70% of that you can do a math roughly a minute and a half so make sure that your stories have now a structure so to give you a simple framework 
if your presentation is five minutes, choose a story which is roughly two minutes. In two minutes, please make sure the setting challenge and resolution is about one and a half minute and the remaining three and a half minutes are other discussions that you may want to have and other areas that you want to talk about. And don't go full on into story. I mean, story is not a binary zero or one. If you have a presentation, start with a 30 second story, 60 second story and look at your audiences. If your audiences like it, then connect more stories. And make sure the stories are connected to your topic. If you're talking about a technical problem, make sure the story is connected to technical problem. The worst form of emotion is that you take your audience on an emotional journey on a story and then drop them and say, okay, now let's come back to a technical problem. They don't like it. So connect the dots. You can take food and connect it to a technology with a story. You can take a travel you have done and connect it to your problem at office. You can take a movie scene and bring it to your jobs. And that's your creative and curious pursuit. So one last suggestion and then I'll stop. Uh, what are the uh, parameters of becoming a good storyteller? According to me, there are few. The first is a massive amount of curiosity to read other stories. Good storytellers are very good researchers. They observe. They spend a lot of time understanding things. And their brain is like a repository of information. So that is very important technique that you must have. The second is their brains at that point of time pick up the right story. It's like imagine a brain to be like a well. And there is an occasion they have to speak something. Their brain has a very nice system where they go into this well, find that right story and bring it up and that is superb cognitive powers, which comes from critical thinking. So these people are very critical in their thought processes. Their minds are able to quickly find out which story will fit in. The third is they practice. Sometimes if their stories are terrible. I mean, I can tell you that I've done many stories and many of them have been disasters. I mean, I still do. But that's the beauty of it, that you throw a story at your audiences. You'll sometimes find them yawning. I must tell you that I did this massive lecture a few weeks ago and I thought I was very nicely prepared. I worked very hard for that lecture. But that day when I was giving that lecture, that story didn't connect with my audience. I saw many of them yawning, disconnected. And after the session was over, I asked them what happened. And they all said, actually not all. Some of them said that, sir, I thought the terms in the story I couldn't understand. And I got my feedback that, okay, I need to make my story a little bit more simpler. And instead of too much of technical terms, and I was talking about microscopes and parasites and bacteria, many people didn't understand that. And it's not their fault. So I have to pick up stories to bring out the best. And the last is they are people who are performers. They love attention. A storyteller cannot survive in isolation. A storyteller needs people. And the people, the audience are make what are what the storytellers desire. So they have this their performance category of storytellers. So they're not people who just hide in a place. They want to come up. They are very comfortable in front of audiences. Doesn't mean they're great public speakers, but they love attention. And because they love attention, that feeds their curiosity and creativity, and they become good storytellers. So if you are a person who absorbs a lot is very critical in their mind, uh, is very open to feedback and trying out new things and loves to speak in front of audiences, not because it gives you fame and fortune, but you get an amazing learning experience from the audience. In fact, I think the best way to describe it is in Christopher Nolan's first movie, which I liked called, the, not the first movie, this movie actually gave him the stardom. It was called The Prestige. Uh, Memento gave him critical acclaim. The prestige gave him popular ranking. And it was a story of two magicians. And both were fighting with each other in the late uh, 18th century, early 19th century Victorian life. And there's a scene where one of them says, why do I love magic so much? And he says that I love magic not because it gave me money, but when I do that trick, I see the eyes of my audience and they are like, their eyes are this big. And when I crack that code, 
their eyes are like full of excitement and uh, this is where they love storytelling so i think storytellers are like that they look at the eyes of their audiences and they become big and that excites them and they do it better and better they take the suspense up and if you study about storytellers and their techniques one extreme is a person called alfred hitchcock he would take his audiences to the brink of a story and make them fall and then you have many other storytellers uh, pixar movies are very good for children then you have these netflix series which uh, there is a term for them they're called mind bending uh, programs the, the the audiences are sometimes completely thrashed because of the concept and they love it and some of us enjoy simple stories which are very predictable so it depends on what kind of audiences are listening to you in the corporate world my request is don't assume that everybody would know the story so keep it simple say it in simpler words make sure the sentences are connecting with the audience and the story evolves with their intelligence number 2 connect the story with your topic that's very important otherwise you'll get a feedback the story was not and number 3 don't overload story start with 20% of your time on stories and if you see the audience getting excited make it 30% then 40% and listen to all kinds of books and podcasts and movies to bring stories and connect it to your day to day life this is where i'll stop we are at 12:30 uh, the way this get set grow works is that i yak for 30 minutes and then you ask me questions for whatever time we have so go ahead fire away we have some questions ha huh, we already have a good question let me see if i have missed some of you have sent me some very nice comments thank you very much uh, there is a very nice comment from one of our listeners mr deepak i feel elated when i listen to your soothing voice thank you so much deepak deepak i must also tell you a very nice joke about my voice my mother in law keeps watching my youtube videos and uh, i got very curious that why is mummy watching my videos and she doesn't understand english that well so i called her up and uh, said mummy why are you watching your with my videos so mummy responds in broken english and says uh, beta your voice very good i go to sleep and uh, that's such a nice way and i think my voice does have a soothing effect and if it makes you feel good thank you very much my mother in law definitely uses it to sleep and it's a great compliment to me all right now let's look at the questions uh jerin john kuti his question is is it good to add a story during technical session especially in teaching like engineering it motivates students absolutely in fact uh, jerin there is no better way to teach than story in fact uh, at school of meaningful experiences and all the work we do we have stopped discussing theory completely we just do a little bit of storytelling get people to discuss i have now become a person who just comes to do stories because it lightens the mood people learn more uh, and i must tell you that i read lot of books on science and engineering and these books have amazing stories you know one of the books i'm reading right now is by a very cutting edge physicist and physics is not a subject where we can expect stories but this person has written it like a thriller and it's a true account of 12 inventions that changed the world and how these people discovered various things like x rays and uh, you know all kinds of things that changed the world and i'll talk about it later but the stories are so powerful and if you can take that story and tell it in your class imagine the power to a student that the student will not only learn physics they will learn the person who described it they will learn the people behind that invention they will become more curious about the subject so you as a teacher please research a little bit tell the story in the class tell people to research more on that story give them some pointers and connect it and see the results and ask them to come prepared for the next uh, class with their own stories so i feel the more technical the presentation the more need to bring stories and if you can bring more and more stories i think that will be great so history is a great subject uh mathematics you can bring a story where application of a mathematical concept can be explained 
uh, you can even uh, bring in some great podcasts about some concepts you have heard and connected you can ask people to even uh, do their own story and create that environment so the power of a story is very very high so please go ahead i encourage all of you that uh, please bring more stories to your technical lectures and you can't go wrong with a 10% story in a technical lecture so very good jaren great question uh, um we don't have any more questions can you please ask us any more questions if not i'll do a simple exercise and then we will uh, get going one of the best examples of storytelling is your job it uh, job interviews are nothing but an occasion for you to tell your stories to the other person a question like tell me something about yourself is a great opportunity and many students just ramble and many people uh, ramble their resume I think it's a great opportunity for you to tell a story about yourself, and then there could be a question: Why should we hire you? And tell a story of how you fit the job, and uh, what are the things you have learned in life. One or two stories there. So bring more stories, and if your mind is struggling with stories, it only means that you're not curious. So you need to fill it up with more experiences, more books, and one day the patterns will come, and that's a very good example. a uh, good question by shravasti chakravarti would you recommend using a lot of non verbal components of course uh, so shravasti imagine i am standing let me tell you a story an anthropologist asked children to eat candies the children ran and held their hands to him it doesn't excite people right so you know a storyteller by nature has to be a person with some non verbals now it doesn't mean that you should become like some amazing mr bean that's an extreme mr bean's non verbals are the most powerful forms of storytelling but not everybody can be mr bean some of us have a very straight face but our voice is very good some of us convey the story with our tonality some of us convey the story by just reading i mean look at steve jobs very minimal uh, non verbals but pauses his pauses were the most powerful non verbals and he read out sometimes he smiled he looked up so yes non verbals play a very important role there are these group of theater people uh called dastar guys uh they they do storytelling as a living and now it's kind of gone very few of them come in so there were professional storytellers around the world and uh, about 150 years ago there were people who would go from town to town to tell stories of news from other towns they were called news readers uh, in fact uh, tom hanks made a movie on it uh, it's on netflix uh, got some critical acclaim but had some serious flaws there but nevertheless the per- his job was that he would go from village to village and he had scrolls of newspapers and he would read out these news and he would tell stories about what's happened and uh, that's where his tonality and his way of speaking came and he would not be too emphatic in non verbals but his verbals were very strong some people can go extreme in non verbals so my request is do what you are comfortable with do what you think your audience will connect with an audience connects with a facial smile eye contact uh face expression that connects with the sentence for example let's say your story is very delicate and sad and the sentence in your story is it was at that time rakesh realized how defeated he was feeling now imagine the same sentence you now convey it with different non verbals with a smile it was at that time rakesh felt how defeated he was feeling it doesn't sound right so you have to behave like a performer non verbals should come in practice a little bit don't go overboard i've met many people who go overboard on storytelling they start to engage with audiences they behave the part there was this one uh, candidate i was working with they enacted the story so there was a story of a mouse and a cat and i thought that in a corporate setting when you start enacting like a cat and a mouse it is inappropriate I mean, if I was the boss sitting, my employee is enacting like a mouse and cat, I would not appreciate it. <clears throat> One more example was in my MBA classroom. 
So students started to enact the whole scene. <coughs> the feedback I gave them was, I didn't like it. So they got very upset. Okay, sir, you say that you should behave like a rock star. And I said, of course. But the behave like a rock star doesn't mean that you start acting. These are two different concepts. First of all, the context is important. <clears throat> Non-verbals are important. And in that, story is important. And if you can now act like a little bit of a rock star, that's good enough. But full on, I'm not so sure. So keep a watch on that, Sharvasti, and that should be good enough. Let's look at the next question. Rakesh Kumar Singh, first impression of storytelling, how to connect emotionally with an audience and simply. <laughs> Rakesh, it's not that easy. I think your objective is not to uh, quickly connect with the audience. It takes time. Audience also looks at a person who looks genuine as a storyteller. And that's where your wisdom and your ability to tell story is very important. <clears throat> Humility plays a very big role here. But you can't go wrong with trying with a story. So start with a simple sentence. I'm going to tell you a story. And that sentence will connect with audience. Because the audience knows the power of that sentence. It comes from childhood. The moment we want to escape from the reality of the world, our mothers would tell us stories. And we loved it. We would sit with our grandfathers and the moment they would say, Aaj kahani sunata we would just sit down because that act of listening to story is very natural to us. So Rakesh, start with a sentence. I'm going to tell you a story. On 1856, two people were walking together and they had a big problem. The story has begun. 1856, two people. Then the next sentence could be Ramesh and Rakesh. It was 11 in the morning. Very hot. Both of them are thirsty. And the problem was there's no water. So now the audience begins to see. And then connect that problem of water to the problem of your company. That we don't have water to drink in our company. Blah, blah, blah. And that's where the audience connects emotionally. So follow the steps. I think the audience will follow you. But don't be in a hurry to quickly win them over. It takes a little bit of wisdom and humility. All right. Next question. Um, Rishikesh Nalwade, how to frame and tell a story in statistics session? Oh, I've, I've done this, uh, Rishikesh. Uh, I want you to go to uh, YouTube. I did a lecture at IM Bangalore Vista three weeks ago, and they should put a recording. And I've talked about Florence Nightingale as a statistician and data visualization. So, Rishikesh, if you just Google Bodhwani Vista, the latest lecture, I think it happened on. 6th of August. Uh, the recording is still there. Please watch it. Uh, Florence Nightingale was not just a nurse, but she was a statistician and a data visualizer. And Rishikesh, you can Google the words Rose Diagram Florence Nightingale and you'll see the data visualization chart. And it's such a great story. In 1854, she did this. And she convinced the authorities of British Empire that they should spend money to clean hospitals. And the data she created was nothing but three columns. The people who were coming to hospital, the soldiers dying from terrible wounds. That was column number one. And she tabulated for every month. Column number two, the soldiers dying because of infections. And column number three, other diseases. And they found out that column two was the biggest column in, the, in that war. Everybody who was coming to hospital most of them were dying because of infections. So she said that if you clean the hospitals, they will die, they will save themselves. And that's what happened. So they cleaned the hospitals, that column became one or two, it became zero after that. And she became the world's first data visualizer for statistics and hospital administration. So Rishikesh, research a little bit. There is a gentleman called Hans Rosling. Hans Rosling has massive amounts of data. So what he does is he takes devices like he'll take this and he'll say this is 20 million people and he'll keep it in front of you 20 million people then he'll take a cell phone this is 6 million people and he'll keep it on the side so if you look at Hans Rosling's videos he'll take apples he'll take toilet papers he'll put them together he'll explain it using some props and that's statistics and he does such a good job of it and uh, that's what you should do next question Shruti, sir, how do we keep us from bragging our knowledge and telling a story? This is tough. 
Shruti. See, by nature, we want to practice because we want to get acceptance. So, repeated practice and your audience will give you feedback. Like, uh, the first time you tell a story, you're very happy about it because you've researched so much. So, I think that day when I gave a new story, I was very full of myself. I've done this, I've done that. So, I was bragging. The next time, I'll focus more on the story. Third time, it'll get better. So, the only way Shruti is practice and listening to feedback. So, a good storyteller is a person who falls a lot, fails a lot. And I encourage you to start doing that very quickly because you will not be able to become humble without failure. The foundation of failure is, uh, sorry, foundation of humility is failure. I think many of us are not even failed in our lives. I mean, we're always topping the class. We're always good in marks. We're always good in the company. So we do become full of ourselves. In fact, some of the world's leading literature in leadership is on that. That too much success can mess up with your mind. And they become bad storytellers. You'll see these leaders walking on stages like arrogant people. They are bad storytellers because they're full of themselves. I made $200 billion. I did this. I did that. Entrepreneurs. I've created value, wealth. I mean, some of them are coming on Shark Tank. And I will not name who are they. But one of them name starts with a uh, very arrogant person. They are the kind of people who are full of themselves. They feel that we have done everything. And that's wrong. So I think humility, failure, rejection, practice. Great question. Next question. Manak Bhattacharaji, sir, how to understand frequency level of listener before breakdown situation? Listener is a group of people from different ages and they are in a professional environment. Very good question. Very nice question. So, Manak, um, let's say you are talking to a group of professionals in your company. The entry level are 22 years and the CXO is 45, 50 years. So your choice of story should be something that connects with all. And uh, here are some ground rules that I have decided. Uh, that what I do is I choose a story which is connected to the level of work we do. So let's say we are working for a semiconductor company. So I find a story that is as close to semiconductors. And it could be a product which is like a semiconductor product. An industry that works on similar principles. And then I choose a story on leadership or problem of engineering, which is similar to the problem we are facing. So I work very hard uh, to bring stories. In fact, I should work harder. Uh, there are great storytellers who spend lots of time researching and it's about reading. So Mainak, I encourage you to at least look at your sector. So let's say you work for semiconductors. I'm just making it up. Uh, read books on semiconductors. And a good starting point is that there are historians who now focus on technology. There are some very good books written. There is a great podcast I can give you right now called Trailblazers. Uh, it is by Walter Isaacson. Uh, fantastic history of many sectors, retail, uh, science, radar, aeronautics, uh, RFID, uh, tattoo, cars, bikes, electric vehicles. So there is a chapter of podcast on that sector. And in that, they drop many books. Environment book, this book, that book. One of the first historian about this industry is this person. So Google that. And man, that becomes your starting point. So read those books, bring them into your office as stories, and that will connect with the organization. So the question you asked is, what is the frequency of the listener? The answer is the sector in which you operate. Everybody should know it. And if they don't, that's your opportunity to bring a story to tell them. And they love it. And your, your brownie points might increase because you know so much about your sector. Banking, finance, history of banking. So you can't go wrong when you start focusing on these things. I have focused a lot on history of education in my work. It helps me a lot. Nowadays, I'm focusing a lot on science and that helps me a lot. Okay. So I think we have covered almost all the questions. Oh, one more. Kritika Bajaj, to be very specific, how can we tell a story during requirement document presentation? So Kritika, that's where you could tell the story of the client's requirement. So I'll give you an example. 
This was in 2000, 2001. I was supposed to bring the requirements of a Japanese customer into my work and go to a meeting in my engineering team. So Intel is an engineering company. This client is Fujitsu. They had a laptop and the laptop had a new connector. And that connector was called a D connector. So I went to Japan and I saw the application of D connector. It is used to connect the laptop to the television. And the television has a D connector and it helps the switching of that particular signal quicker. Otherwise, it becomes very black. So I said that story that imagine you are a uh, person in Japan, you are watching television using your laptop and you switch the channels. If the D connector is not there, the channel switch takes three to four seconds. It's such a bad experience, right? Imagine you're on your channel and you're switching three, four seconds of blackness. What a terrible experience. So that's where they discovered this or invented this new connector. It's very important for them to have it. And we have to put it in our motherboard at Intel. So when I told that story to them, they pictured a Japanese person watching a TV, that three second gap. And then they quickly understood. So I took the requirement as a story and conveyed the problem in the meeting. So I hope that helps you. So tell the scenario as a story and put some little bit milch masala to make it fun. Don't go overboard. Don't be unethical. Storytellers can go overboard too much. So you have to be careful with that. Excellent. So I think we had a great time. Um, looks like we are done with questions. Um, some requests for all of you. Um, storytelling is nothing but a little bit of practice every day. So let's say tomorrow morning you have a meeting. Please do 30 seconds of storytelling. Do those four elements. Add the place, time, uh, protagonist and details. The next step, make it into a presentation. If your presentation is five minutes, 20%. About you know, one minute or so. Uh, one, to, one to one and a half minutes to storytelling. And once you do that, in that storytelling format, spend more time on the setting, the challenge, and the resolution. And if you do that, I think you're all set. Please join our GSG WhatsApp group. Please come and tell us more questions. I hope you found these sessions exciting. Please send us more topics that we should cover. I've covered five topics so far. Glossophobia, the whole ocean of communication, script writing, structuring, and today was storytelling. So we're done with oratory. Next session onwards, I want to go deeper into collaboration, conversations, and we'll go deeper into conflicts and go more into that because that's an area that will also come in. Uh, there is a very nice uh, uh, question. Okay, there's a question of cracking tips to go into IMB. Priyanka, I never wrote CAT. I don't think I'm the right person, so don't ask me. Uh, there are many training institutes who will take there. Um, this forum is only for those people who want to learn communication. I can help you with that. And I'm just an adjunct faculty, so I don't know many things. And I'm not the best person to guide you. Um, Sachin has a question. Any book you recommend to read on storytelling? There are many of them. Uh, start with my book, uh, Boasting Alert. Um, Here's my book, What to Say, When to Shut Up, Sachin. And once you finish this book, and this book has a lot of stories, so start with that. Then the next book is a good book, uh, which is uh, by the person who runs TED.com. I think Chris Anderson, his book is also good. And these two, three, if you go, I think you're good enough. If you do storytelling on Amazon, you'll find hundreds of books. More or less, they are good books. They have insights. But I don't think... Too much of reading is important. What you need to read is good books on good stories. So start reading Jatak Kathas, Amar Chitra Kathas, Calvin Hobbes. Look at movies. Look at uh, history. That becomes the fuel of stories. And the structure I've given you, so if you apply that, you are good to go. You cannot read a book and swim. Best is to jump in the water, start swimming, make mistakes. And on that note, please join our WhatsApp group. Um, uh, Aparna says, what is the number to join WhatsApp? My colleague Ruben will uh, do that. There is one more question from Atmika. Can you please address how to drive a conversation in the direction we want specifically when the other party is not open to new approach, ideas, 
and there is also a managerial hierarchy. Atul says, please do one session on written communication. Absolutely. So Atul and Atmika, we will take these points and we will do sessions on that. Uh, we have finished oratory. We will now do a little bit on conflicts, conversations. Atmika's question will go there. And we will do one more session on writing. And please give those ideas coming. My colleague has sent you the WhatsApp group. And please join it. It's only for communication enthusiasts. Please don't come to post your jobs and here's my resume and all that. We don't do anything of that. We just discuss Q&A on communication. And even I don't know many things. So I'm learning from you. And thank you very much for being there. Nice Sunday to all of you. Ruben, thank you for organizing this. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Take care.